G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Friday morning here in Australia, or sort of Friday lunchtime, so getting ready to very early Friday sort of uh, morning over in the States. Now, very interesting. SEC gives okay to social media platform to issue stablecoin without registering as a security. So this could be leading towards a green light for Facebook's Libra coin. Now, no guarantees on that, but it is very, very interesting. So here it says, the letter states the regulatory agency will not recommend enforcement action against a platform issuing a digital currency capable of being converted to fiat. The US Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC, has issued a rare no action letter in response to a request from a blockchain backed platform over the issuance of a digital asset. The SEC letter issued on 19th of November says that its Division of Corporation Finance would not recommend enforcement action against Avatar Social Platform, IMVU, issuing its VCoin digital asset under certain conditions. The Commission will allow the firm to offer the token without registering it, it as a security. Crypto firms issuing their own tokens often have to abide by SEC's regulatory framework, which has proved contentious, and that's where Facebook's Libra has really come unstuck. The classification of a security is for assets dependent on the work of a third party to gain profit. To abide by the no action letter, IMVU needs to keep its new stablecoin from looking like an investment opportunity, which for example, Facebook got tripped up doing with its Libra stablecoin. So there you go, that's something that they have to watch out for. As part of the staff uh, recommendation letter, the SEC said IMVU would still need would still be subject to know your customer and anti-money money laundering regulations in addition to have, having specified limits on Vcoin purchases, conversions and transfers. So that is where, you know, it's such a fine line, you know, they're not being regulated by the SEC, uh, you know, as in a normal investment would, i.e. a security, but they are being able to bring this stable coin out as long as, you know, again, it abides by know your customer and anti-laundering reg regulations. Now, this does make me think that Facebook's, uh, I think Libra has been canned and they've had to come up with some other coins, but I'd say Facebook will suddenly have a stable coin and that's all it will be. It'll be nothing more than a stable coin. Uh, but it will have to follow again, know your uh, customer details and all the rest of it. So that will likely mean to be part of Facebook, you'll actually have to send in, well, not so much Facebook, but anyway, part of their payment system, you'll have to get verified and regulated and all the rest of it. So interesting though, that it does seem that digital currencies, uh, you know, they're going to be huge. They're, you know, again, I've never even heard of IMV, you or whatever they are. Oh, but they're going to have their own sort of stable coin. Uh, so Facebook won't be far behind. And yeah, watch this space. Again, the digital platform is going to be huge. Uh, massive is a better way. All right. People talking about DeFi is dead. Really? DeFi tokens make triple digit gains as Bitcoin price searches for support. As Bitcoin bulls attempt to flip 18K to support, DeFi investors are bagging hefty triple digit sums. Since topping out at 18,476 on November the 17th, Bitcoin price has been flirting with the $18,000 level as bulls fight to flip the level to support and chase after the all-time high, which is 19,789. I saw 19,400, but anyway, different exchanges will have different prices. While this battle takes place and the bulk of crypto and mainstream finances Finance outlets focus on Bitcoin price. A number of less loved crypto assets are producing generous returns. We can see here 33%. Now this is against the dollar, not so much against Bitcoin. 39% uh, and again, Aave, Uniswap, Yearn Finance, Synthetix, Maker, Compound. They've all been doing really well. SushiSwap has really uh, outperformed everyone and then ThorChain's ruined. So uh, there you go. As shown by Masari's DeFi Assets Index, many of the top tokens are providing hefty double-digit gains. Within the last seven days, Aave ricocheted off its double bottom to rally 214% and currently trades at slightly above $80. Day traders are likely playing the support and resistance checks with the ascending channel pattern. At the time of writing, Aave's trading volume, MACD and RSI, still reflect a healthy amount of interest from bulls. So again, this is people just building positions. 
And don't get me wrong, when it gets to the next uh, top, they're going to sell off and it's going to fall down. Uh, and look, if you're a day trader and you're good at all that stuff, knock your socks off. Uh, for me, uh, just invest. Now, I do want to show something uh, about this. You know, the day trading, you've always got to try and be ahead of the game. And look, even in investing, you want to try and be ahead of the game. But that is really the hard part. I put this tweet out earlier. If you want to outpace the average investor, stop doing what the average investor is doing. By being in cryptocurrencies, you're already ahead of the average investor. Now, that's not financial advice, though, because cryptocurrency can be highly dangerous, but it is getting less and less dangerous for certain coins anyway. But if you want to outdo the average investor, don't do what the average investor is doing. Now, here's a good start. This is for you if you're in the crypto industry. When Bitcoin is pumping, buy alts. When alts are pumping, buy Bitcoin. And finally, when the run is over, you got to know when it's over, sell. You don't have to sell all of it, but at least get your money back and take some profits along the way. Don't just simply think this is going to last forever. It's not. And look, I've been caught out back in 2017. I got in really late. I think it was September, October 2017, and I just thought this is going to keep going forever. I turned $800 into about $4,200, and then I watched that $4,200 turn into literally only a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, so I think it was around about maybe three or $400 dollar uh, in total. So that was a loss though, and we don't worry about the $4,200 because that's what it could have been if I had have sold. I invested $800 myself. That $800 then became, I think, around about yeah, $340, maybe $400 at its lowest point. But I still have all of that cryptocurrency. I've changed it into some other ones, and that's now worth about $1,800 though. So I'm up about $1,000 from my investments from back in 2017. And my investments this year uh, have been doing pretty good as well. But that is 101 for serious investors. If you're simply going to follow the herd, you are just the average investor. Which, look, there's nothing wrong with it as long as you're the sort of average investor. Average isn't so bad. You don't want to be the stupid investor and jumping into things after they've already pumped. You need to try and find things before they're pumping. And again, Bitcoin's been pumping right now. So look, you can chase the Bitcoin pump, but all the altcoins were dumping. That was the time to buy them. And, you know, that Bitcoin went on its pump. And now that Bitcoin is sort of rounded off, altcoins are going to start pumping. When altcoins start to pump, take the profits from there and put them into Bitcoin. And then when Bitcoin starts to pump, take the uh, profits from Bitcoin, put them back into the altcoins when they're dumping. And just, you know, if you want to do that kind of day trading stuff, or swing trading is more what it is, and I do a bit of swing trading, that's the way to go. But most of all, when the rally is done, and you need to know when it's done, Get ready to sell. Take some of those profits. Put it into cash. There is going to be a top and then it's all going to fall back. I don't think the lows are going to be as bad as what they have been before. I don't think there's going to be 80% uh, retracements anymore. I could be wrong. I think it might be more around the kind of 60, 70%. I think, again, the highs after this one will get a little bit lower and the lows will definitely get a little bit lower. Bitcoin will start to level out. The other altcoins will still stay uh, fairly volatile and even you know the real low cap ones, they'll be majorly volatile. But you're welcome, that's my advice. And again, it's just personal advice, it is not financial advice. I am not a financial advisor and I don't offer you financial advice. This is all from just my time in the space uh, and I've been here for a few years now and just you know reading things and listening to other people and taking in as much information as I can. So if you don't want to be the average investor, don't do what the average investor is doing. And again, if you're in cryptocurrencies, it already says that you're not the average investor already. But dangerous space if you don't know what you're doing. Investing, period, is dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So make sure that you get some advice from some people that you know you trust. Uh, and please, you know, take my advice with a you know a grain of salt but I am not a financial advisor so don't take what I'm saying as financial advice just a personal opinion all right let's go over here have a look let's refresh this has been on for a while so that said 510 billion there we go in just a matter of minutes we've gone up to 513 billion price is starting to move already Bitcoin it just keeps flirting with that 18,000 at the moment I do think we're going to flip that uh, and make it support and 
You know, we've only got sort of 11 days to go now for Bitcoin to reach that $20,000 mark and break all time highs. I'm still confident that we'll do it, but look, we may have a hefty rejection from that $20,000 mark. I don't think that's going to happen, but it's just a possibility that we've got to keep in the back of our mind. Gas prices for ETH, that's a bit steep, 54. Uh, there we go, 65%. We're right on that mark. And we'll have to wait and see whether this is going to grow. Again, I think it could. I think uh, BTC could easily go up to 75%, particularly if Bitcoin breaks its all-time high. I think there's going to be that short period where people are just going to be piling in and they're going to get really excited. And then they're going to uh, start to really get into altcoins. Exactly when that's going to happen, though, I'm not exactly sure. Let's see, what are the big movers? All right, so again, sushi just keeps pumping and good on anyone who's in sushi. Uh, not for me, they had too many issues to start with. That's not to say it's not a good project and hasn't sorted itself out. I'm not saying it is a good project. I'm just saying it's put me off. Uh, Huobi coin seems to be coming back. All right, Waves, Yearn Finance just keeps going from strength to strength at the moment. Nicely done, Litecoin, good on you. So again, I really do think institutions are gonna look to get a foothold in Litecoin. There's still 20 million Litecoins to be mined, a little bit under 20 million, I think it's 19 million, compared to Bitcoin, which has only got $2 million. Litecoin is basically a copy of Bitcoin. It is a little bit different. It's not exactly the same. So just be careful. But I think institutions will want to get into Litecoin and get a really good foothold on it. That's my personal opinion. And I've got myself a bag of Litecoin and I'm happy it's doing better now. But We'll have a look at the chart. It's more the dollar value it's doing well. Uh, against BTC, we're going to have to wait and see. So generally some pretty good sort of uh, gains there. And again, Synthetics Network just keeps slowly moving its way up. So well done. Uniswap, Aave, again, doing really well. What about losses? Has anyone had any real bad losses? Ouch, there has been a couple. So Vite, Vite, I don't know how to say that. Uh, that's really hurt and it's down uh, quite a bit, but we can see in the last hour, maybe it's found its bottom and it's pumping back up. It does look like it's found a bottom, uh, rolled over it, and you'll just have to wait and see whether it's gonna continue up. NEM, uh, Blockstack, that's a shame. It did well for a while, but oh well, what can you do? Um, and then really it's just single digit sort of losses, so nothing too bad, uh, yeah. Not too bad at all, really, other than kind of this one's really hurting. 10%'s not so bad, and particularly if you've had a really good seven days, but this is still down over seven, day, seven days, so uh, NEM, uh, that's going to hurt a little bit. All right, so speaking about Litecoin. So as we can see, it was sort of down here yesterday, and I said we're waiting to see whether Litecoin is going to flip. This, I'm hoping, was the bottom. So when this is against Bitcoin, so when Litecoin is going up, it's outperforming Bitcoin. When it's going down, Bitcoin's outperforming it. So we can see that hopefully hit its low because this was getting really wide and it was getting super volatile. We need to see if it can break this mark and then break out and start to make its way back up. Litecoin's generally a pretty good oscillator and quite often Litecoin uh, moves just a little bit ahead of Bitcoin. This time it's not, uh, it's lagging behind Bitcoin. So I'm waiting to see. It's still broken out of this long-term downtrend. So. We go from here, it was on a long-term downtrend. We broke out of it, we've come back and retested it a few times, now we're starting to make our way back up. But now this is the short-term kind of resistance against Bitcoin. Can we break outside of this and start to now make our way up? Time will tell. Uh, it's down a little bit at the moment, but not too bad. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, I'm, I'm optimistically positive on... <laughs> <laughs> Litecoin that it's going to finally start to make its move uh, and hopefully the gains uh, will be there and be really good and again generally most altcoins that do well outperform Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the least volatile of these sort of cryptocurrencies other than the stable coins and again we're talking about the good ones not the shit ones. Shit ones can be all over the place but you know ones that have been around for a while. So Litecoin's been around, Ethereum's been around, XRP's been around and they generally outperform Bitcoin uh, over the entirety of the cycle. But unfortunately, their highs are a whole lot higher, their lows are a lot lower. So again, you know, Bitcoin might only retrace 80%. Uh, these other coins, they can retrace, you know, 90, 95% of all the gains that were ever made. So that's the issue. You've got to know uh, when to get in and when to get out and, you know, 
things like that. But let's hope that uh, Litecoin continues to slowly but surely make its way up, and I think it probably will. Ethereum against Bitcoin. So this is the key resistance. Uh, and again, this is on Bitstamp, so it doesn't have all the history. It's only got since back in, what are those, 2017. Ethereum only came out in 2015 anyway. All right, so we can see there's a bit of confluence along here. This has been supported a number of times. It's come down and bounced off it. Got close, bounced off it, bounced off it, fell through it. It was a bit of support and resistance here. Likewise, it was a bit of support and sort of resistance here. Well, more support there. Uh, and again, support here. And, you know, Ethereum really went on a pump for a while. And ever since it's been rolling over, we're waiting to see if this is going to hold. Could this fall through or is this going to start to make its way back up? And again, it still could fall a bit before it comes back here and bounces off. So Ethereum against the dollar is still doing all right. But against Bitcoin, it's being outperformed by Bitcoin. But maybe Bitcoin's going to range here for a while and the alts and everything are really going to start to pump. We'll have to wait and see. Last but not least, the big granddaddy of them all. So we can see here's the all-time high. We're pretty close at the moment. We are not far off. But again, we can just see this run here. This has been quite steep. I am concerned that we might get here and see a bit of a nasty rejection. Again, we could come to here and come all the way back down here and test that. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to do that. I think there's still going to be too much exuberance, but I do think it's quite possible that we hit around sort of 20,000 and maybe come back down and sort of retest in around this 15,000. That's entirely possible. I'm not really sure that's what's going to happen. Again, I think there's still too much institutional sort of FOMO at the moment. Uh, they're going to get in. It's not retail. Retail's still yet to come, and that's really going to push the price high. But I think the institutions at the moment are getting in and just buying what they can. Uh, so I don't see any major retracements. But look, I could be wrong. But we zoom in. We have a look. The weekend is upon us. So it is possible we see something like this. These are both weekends, these reds here and these reds over here, these are weekends. Now we haven't had a Thursday retracement, which uh, quite often happens. It's like late Thursday night, early Friday morning, and we haven't seen the Friday retracement yet. That could still happen. So really, Saturday or Sunday, every chance we have a bit of a pullback. The gains are made during the week, and then some stage over the weekend, people sell off, take a bit of money, and again, people you know take some profits to go and spend on things, or just simply take some profits and wait for the next pullback point. So waiting to see that, but my guess is we might range here for a while. We might pull back down to sort of maybe even sixteen thousand nine hundred, so we could lose you know a thousand dollars over the weekend. But then I think there's definitely every chance that then we start to make our way back up again. All right, let me know what you think. Do you think there's going to be a weekend pullback or is this going to be a weekend where we just pump straight through? And also, do you agree that if you don't want to make average returns like an average investor, don't do what the average investor is doing then. You've got to find something different to do. You still need to have some knowledge and please get some uh, advice from someone, at least someone who you trust in any space that you're going in. Let's say it's not cryptocurrencies. You're now looking at the cannabis markets. Uh, they are looking pretty promising at the moment. Um, again, personal opinion, not financial advice. If you want to get some uh, advice, find someone who's in the industry. Uh, they are out there. You know, Find them on Twitter, or on YouTube or whatever. And again, get it from more than just one source. Don't believe just one person. Go out and find that. But if you're just doing what everyone's doing, you're just going to make the same returns that everyone else is doing. The big returns and the big money are made from people who don't do what everyone else is doing. They do. Not completely the opposite, but they just, they set their own path. And again, for me, if Bitcoin's pumping and alts are dumping, for me, I'm getting into alts. I'm buying into them heavy. When the alts are starting to pump, I'm getting into Bitcoin. I'm putting my money into Bitcoin and that's the cycle I just keep following. But what I have learned is when it is finally over and you don't have to pick the exact top, it's not about picking the exact top. No one ever lost money when they sold for a profit. You might have lost some unrealized profits, but you can't lose money selling for a profit. It's just, it's impossible. So don't try and worry about that. Don't think, oh, but it could have more to go. It could, 100% could, but it might not. And then you might lose all the profits that you ever made. So just remember that. But again, my personal opinion is it's still very early. 
wait until sort of you know September December next year uh, and that would be a, probably a good time to start to at least think to scale out look at you know could go on for longer because of you know the mass adoption that is going to slowly occur but it might not as well my advice would be start to take some profits around sort of September next year again just scale out some you know maybe 10% here 10% there 10% here you know whatever it may be but again personal opinion not financial advice all right stay safe be kind to one another hopefully you're on that gain train today and I'll see you next time